What's going on, Vinyl Community? Welcome to another video with The Record Spinner. Real quick, making her video debut on this channel. This is my girlfriend, Abby. You've seen photos of her, but this goes to prove that she doesn't <laughs> actually exist. <laughs> and we are in Washington, D.C. on a little vacation. And for every time Abby goes to a bookstore, I go to a record store. So here I am at Smash Records here in Washington, D.C., a notable punk rock slash indie inspired record store and i am really excited it's been a hot minute since i've done some massive hauling at a record store it's funny so every <laughs> every time that abby and i go out on a little adventure date i always buy a record to commemorate the day but this is the first time that i'm gonna be hauling <laughs> for this venture so let's go in and check it out shall we shop so much packed inside that small little area between all the new LPs the new stuff a bunch of record store day leftovers some cool vintage clothing cool selection of van sneakers 
all the old Thrasher magazines. If you are a punk rock fanatic, Smash Records is a definite stop if you are in the Washington, D.C. area. Now, what did I snag? First, we're going to start off with a little 7-inch. And this is The Beatles' Baby It's You. Uh, this is the single that came um, from the Live at the BBC album from the mid-90s. Uh, includes a couple of B-sides. Not quite sure if the B-sides were featured on the original album. I'll have to double check just because there's some tracks that kind of were left off of the original Live at the BBC. But there were two copies there. It's near mint shape. And I figured might as well snag it up. So got that from the Beatles collection. Here is a really cool find with some nice kind of sentimental backstory behind it. This is Ozzy Osbourne Osmosis. Uh, this is actually an unofficial pressing that came out recently. It's tricky because when I saw all the copyright information on the back, I thought it was stripped from the See You on the Other Side box set, but this did indeed get the unofficial treatment. And this album was actually a firm favorite of mine when I was a kid, getting into Ozzy. Um, particularly the song Perry Mason was my absolute favorite. Um, I used to bop around to that a lot when I was a kid. But there's other great tracks in here, such as I Just Want You and uh, See You on the Other Side as well. So I was ha happy to pick this up. And then here is a Record Store Day Leftover that came out this year. I do have this album in my collection, but it's like a sort of dodgy reissue um, and when I saw that this was getting um, a re-release from the original master tapes and everything I was really stoked to check it out for myself but the shop that I'm over at did not get copies so I was happy to find it afterwards and that is the Amboy Dukes Journey to the Center of the Mind one of the best garage psychedelic albums of the late uh, 1960s uh, this is pre-solo fame Ted Nugent in the band. Of course, the title track is the big highlight, but there's so many other awesome tracks on here, such as Ivory Castles, Missionary Mary, Mississippi Murder. Um, it's an absolutely fantastic record. It is pressed on hookah glass cover vinyl, as you can see on the uh, cover. And to kind of keep it in mind, it does come with a pack of rolling papers. I don't know if uh, Straight Edge Ted would uh, be all for this, but who cares? It's the Amboy Dukes turning to the center of so good stuff this is a bit of a blind buy um, I was looking in the Van Halen section and I saw this didn't know quite much about it but that's kind of one of the beautiful things with most bootlegs this is Van Halen destruction in Dallas uh, this is recorded at the reunion arena in Dallas from November 18th 1982 so this is during the diver down tour um, not gonna lie I didn't even spare myself you know a few seconds to go on YouTube and listen to a sound clip. I kind of just bought this on a whim, uh, but it's Roth era Van Halen. As much as I am warming up to the Van Hagar stuff, uh, this is the sweet spot. So I figured I would check this out for myself and it's on white vinyl, two LPs. It comes with a couple of uh, bonus demos as well as uh, bonus cuts. So I was pretty happy to pick this up. Now here are some David Bowie releases that are quite interesting. Uh, both unofficial but somewhat official i'll explain so we have 1969 to 1973 rarities volume one and volume two now with this period kind of being the golden sort of early period back when he was ziggy and all that stuff uh this is just a bunch of tracks from that period um non-album singles single edits b-sides other tracks but when you group these two lps together you essentially get the recall compilation that came on the five years box set which basically kind of just collects everything else so that's exactly what these two essentially are you know because that is a two lp set they split it up between these two lps it's interesting how this kind of came out in the unofficial realm but yet all this stuff is officially you know release material but i figured because i'm a bowie fanatic and i kind of collect bowie on impulse I figured I would check this, these out for myself. They've kind of been on my radar, and I've been—I know that they've been out for a little while. So I was happy to see both of them out in the wild. It would have been a buzzkill if they had Volume One and not Volume Two. So made out with both. And next up, here is an. This is one of those oddity records. Um, this is. This will sit alongside like my Tiny Tim records as some of the more weirder albums in my collection. Um, the whole backstory behind this whole thing is, it's fascinating, interesting to kind of wrap around, but get ready for this. 
the Manson family sings the songs of Charles Manson. So this basically consists of songs written by uh, Charles Manson, sung by members of his family, Squeaky Fromm and everyone else that was involved. Um, this has been, um, I've seen this at Collingswood Music so many times, and it's still there probably as I'm filming this clip, and I'm always like, would it be weird to get that for the collection? So from a historical standpoint, and for those that are kind of intrigued with that whole weird period of the late 1960s and what went on in the Los Angeles area, it's something weird and interesting to have. And you can see photos taken from the various court cases and such on the back. It's weird shit indeed, but um, I guess every collector has to have some weird shit. And last but not least, because Smash Records is a punk rock centered store, I had to leave with some punk. This is an album that I almost got when I was out in New Orleans uh, with the youngest members of the BC. And my good friend Emma over at 8 Bono Love will be happy that I picked this up. This is The Jam, this is The Modern World, fantastic record by these English, British punkers. And um, had to get it for the collection at some point, and that time was now. So there you guys go. That is my little record store vlog at Smash Records in Washington, D.C. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video, and most importantly, keep the record spinning.